Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Netflix. Today on Variant, I reviewed The Man of Steel. I hated it. No, I'm just kidding. Or am I? Welcome to Variant, we love comics more than we're not going to stop hearing about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's child for the next month. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Now, I'm sure most of you guys by now have seen Man of Steel as it's one of the most anticipated movies of the summer, especially for us Superman fans who wanted some redemption after the tragedy that was Superman Returns. So I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on the Man of Steel, which there will be spoilers in my review, so you've been warned. Again, there will be spoilers in my review. Also, I'm going to give you my thoughts on Superman's new comic, Superman Unchained, which that will also have spoilers. So sit tight, today's a Superman review fest. Yeah. Yeah. Man of Steel has been taking a beating by the critics, and last I checked it was at a 56% on Rotten Tomatoes. Although, on the flip side of that, it seems like critics don't really like a lot of Zack Snyder's work. Like 300, which I think everyone would agree was amazing, they gave a 60%. And Watchmen, which I really enjoyed, they gave a 64%. Although, I know some people may not agree with me on that one, I still really enjoyed Watchmen. With that said though, I really enjoyed Man of Steel a lot. Now, I'm not saying it was a perfect movie by any means. The movie did have a few issues, but overall, I think it was a good movie. It's definitely the best Superman movie we've ever had, in my opinion. Some people might be saying, what about the first couple Christopher Reeve Superman films? And yes, they're great and classics, but let's face it, they're extremely dated, and they didn't have the technology back then to really give us the epic scale Superman needs to have. However, that is not the case with this movie. The reason I enjoyed this movie so much and think it's the best Superman movie to date is because it's the first Superman movie to actually touch on the epic scale that is Superman. For all the Superman fans out there who read Superman comics and watch all of his cartoons, you know what I am talking about. He's pretty much a god, so to have him always fighting Lex Luthor in a movie who isn't a threat physically gets a little old. I wanted to see him go up against a villain that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman, and that's just what we got in this movie. It's really the first Superman movie that made me feel like I was reading a Superman comic with all the action and out-of-the-world stuff that only Superman can handle. That we see in the comic books. I also liked how they handled his origin, giving it to us in flashbacks and not just a straightforward progression. I mean, some people say it made it feel rushed, but... We all know Superman's origin, we don't need a full hour of Superman growing up in Smallville. So the flashbacks was a great way to see a little of that, like his struggle growing up and his inner conflict on whether or not he should share his powers with the world. What I thought made that conflict even better was you have his birth father, Jor-El, basically saying you'll be the Earth's example and give them an ideal to strive towards. And then you have his Earth father, Jonathan Kent, saying the world's not ready for you and pretty much you need to hide your powers at all costs, which kind of made him seem like a jerk. But later in the film, Jonathan Kent lets himself die telling Clark not to save him. So you saw it was just out of pure love for Clark and fear for him that the world would reject him, which is why he wanted him to keep his powers a secret. So just seeing the two sides of that and how Clark comes to terms with finally revealing himself to the world, I thought was pretty awesome. Now, I've said it before on the show, Henry Cavill, in my opinion, is Superman. He just fits the part so well. And I couldn't agree with myself more. I absolutely loved him as Superman and think he did a fantastic job. He made me believe in my heart that he is in fact the real Superman. Michael Shannon was great as General Zod, Russell Crowe was a fantastic pick as Jor-El, Amy Adams did great as Lois Lane, and Kevin Costner and Diane Lane were perfect picks for the Kents. The whole cast was pretty much spot on, I thought, and the visual work was nuts. Superman flying and explosions, just all the VFX work looked amazing. Definitely one of the most action-packed movies all summer. And the music score by Hans Zimmer was great, as always. Now, as much as I did like the movie, like I said earlier, it did have a few issues and some things that bugged me a little. The movie did feel a little slow at times, where I was like, alright, pick it up a little. Also, I thought some of the character development wasn't as good as it could have been. But I think my biggest gripe is all the collateral damage Superman caused in all the fight scenes. In the comics and even cartoons, Superman is always well aware of his surroundings, always trying to take the fight somewhere where people wouldn't get hurt. But that is not the case for this movie. It almost seemed like Superman didn't care at all that they were fighting in a city where I could only assume thousands of people were dying while those buildings were collapsing on them or with them in it. So that was just a little off-putting to me. But at the same time, obviously, he did care about Earth and their well-being as he didn't let Zod turn Earth into Krypton, which would have killed everyone on Earth. Or in the controversial last scene where he had to kill General Zod in order to save a family, which some people are complaining about because Superman would never kill, which actually isn't completely true. For example, in Superman issue 3 of the New 52, Superman is forced to kill his friend Heather, who is possessed by an alien entity and will kill thousands of people if he doesn't kill her. So he does kill her for the greater good. Or at least he thinks he does. She survived, but the point is Superman is willing to kill to save innocent lives. 
much like he did in the final scene of Man of Steel. So I don't see why people are all up in arms concerning that. Anyway, it seems Superman writer Mark Waid agrees with me as far as Superman not seeming to care about the lives of others during the huge city battle scenes, calling it disaster porn. But besides those complaints, I thought the movie was great. I really liked how they had a lot of nods to one of the best Superman origin stories, Superman Birthright, written by Mr. Mark Waid himself. My favorite being the S on his chest standing for hope. Love that in the comic books, and it translated really well in the movie. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who spotted the oil truck in the movie saying LexCorp on it, or the satellite in space that said Wayne Enterprises, which made the fanboy in me smile quite a bit. I also think this movie is definitely a step in the right direction as far as DC making their own cinematic universe, and I'm excited to see what they do for Man of Steel 2, which the studios have said is being fast-tracked. But I'm even more excited because of the success of this movie, we will probably be getting movies like Wonder Woman, The Flash, Aquaman, and of course, the heavily wanted Justice League movie, which will be the happiest day of my life or the worst day of my life, depending on whether or not they screw it up. On a scale of 1 to 10, though, overall, I'm going to give The Man of Steel a solid 8. It's definitely the best Superman movie to date, in my opinion, and really shows the true scale and scope of Superman like we've never seen before in a movie. Yes, it has a few issues, but overall, it's a great movie. Netflix streams TV shows and movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix member, you can instantly watch TV episodes and movie streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV with your Xbox 360, PS3, or Nintendo Wii console, plus Apple devices, Kindle, and Nook. You can get a free 30-day trial membership by going to www.netflix.com forward slash variant and signing up now. To coincide with the Man of Steel movie, DC launched a brand new Superman title called Superman Unchained, written by Batman writer Scott Snyder, who is quickly becoming known as one of the best writers in comics. And it's being drawn by all-star comic book artist and co-publisher of DC, Mr. Jim Lee. The first issue came out last week, and I gotta say, it's already on track for being the best Superman comic currently coming out every month. This comic is a prime example of what I meant earlier when I said the Man of Steel had that epic scale from the comics. I mean, within the first couple pages of this comic, we get a huge fold-out poster that's part of the comic story and puts in perspective what Superman is really doing and capable of. Which the art on this double-sided poster is just breathtaking. All the art in this comic is, which I wouldn't expect anything less from Jim Lee. As for the story, Scott Snyder has a way of finding empty spots in characters' history and building and adding new mythology to the characters that fits perfectly into their rich history, much like he did for Batman in the Court of Owls storyline. And it seems like he's found a way to do that with Superman as well. At the end of this book, we are left with an image of a new villain who's apparently been around for years as hinted in the first three pages of the comic. I also love how this book seems like it's going to focus more on the action pack side of Superman as it really shows off his strength and what he can do, which is what we all want to see from a Superman book. I mean, he can move freaking planets. So pretty much my thoughts are, if you're looking to start reading a new Superman comic, this is the one to jump onto, because if it stays on the path it's headed, it's definitely going to be one of the best ongoing Superman titles out right now. First up for Wednesday, June 19th, we have Kick-Ass 3, Issue 2. Kick-Ass is now leading the reformed superhero team, Justice Forever, just in time to face some terrifying new foes. Here we have Superior Spider-Man, Issue 12. This title has surprisingly been quite good, although it's still only a matter of time before Peter Parker is back in the Spidey costume once again. Up next is Nova, Issue 5. Two of the best creators in comics, Jeff Loeb and Ed McGuinness, are working on this brand new title and bring Nova's origin to a close. And finally, we have Saga Trade Paperback Volume 2. This book collects issues 7 through 12, the second storyline of the epic new series. If you still haven't checked out this title, putting it simply, what the heck are you waiting for? Well, that brings another episode to a close, but I want to know what you guys thought about The Man of Steel, so you can leave your comments down below on what you thought about the movie. And if you want to keep up with the show and all things comic related, be sure to like our variant Facebook page. You can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Aris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. If you enjoyed, they gave a 64%, although I don't really think... <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> City battle scenes, calling it disaster porn. But besides that... <clears throat> ah, oh, again, Josh, happened again. My nose is itching so bad. So bad. Ugh. I'm good. <laughs>